spent 15 days.
$3 billion that we are today, creating an additional $2 million jobs in the country and increase our contribution to GDP of this nation. Request you all to please take a seat in Central Bar. Thank you for uh, coming for our event. The whole industry team, uh, my fellow CEO 
Sway members and all, I guess, eminent diamond merchants, jewelry manufacturers from all over Mumbai who come to this event. And actually, I was pleasantly surprised to see some even Surat, uh, you know, diamond merchants over here who especially come to honor you, sir, today. So, having said that, uh, Biju Bhai has been in this, uh, he's, he's been a banker for 38 years. And uh, interestingly, you know, there, there aren't, I would say, many bankers who have experience in public sector, private sector, and a foreign bank. So, Biju Bhai is uh, one who in his illustrious uh, 38 years has been a part of all three segments. Now, he started his career as a probationary officer in State Bank of India in 1984. So, you know, and uh, Interestingly, when I was served uh, leading this today, uh, and, you know, and, uh, so I passed my 10th standard in 1985. So you've been a banker before I, you know, <laughs> passed my 10th standard. And then he moved to AP and Amro Bank. He was there uh, in, in 97. In AP and Amro Bank, he's handled, I guess, a variety of uh, government of portfolios and tremendous experience over there. But obviously, interestingly, I'm sure, sir, the diamond journey had started at AB and Amro Bank and that's when I'm sure he got in touch with uh, many of you all and started this uh, diamond journey which we are all uh, proud to be associated with and have been a very, uh, I would say, valuable member of so, you know, obvious and you know, I don't want to sound uh, wrong but he's my banker too and besides that I spoke to a lot of, uh, you know, our colleagues over here as to what you have meant to them over the years and, and I can say that uh, one thing which came out very critically is the 2008 crisis. So in 2008, uh, you know, the world crashed and uh, with the world, obviously, we are always, uh, and we saw this even in the COVID time, that we are one of the few industries who always gets affected first and we are the last ones to recover. Because uh, even though, uh, you know, like we famously keep on telling in our industry, diamonds are the ultimate gift of love, but somehow in crisis times, people forget love. <laughs> And we are always the first ones to get hit and last ones to recover. Having said that, in 2008, and uh, sir, I must say this very fondly, even for your colleagues over here, it's because of your, uh, I guess, tremendous depth, knowledge, relationships, expertise, I guess all the things which I'm sure you're going to hear a lot of in the next uh, one hour, is uh, you actually were the friend in need. And uh, sir, I, I can only say this on a lighter note, that uh, even though, say, most people in our industry is always saying interest rate has the highest interest rate. Sir, maybe there is good news for the WT over here that uh, that's one co constant complaint that the trade has that, you know, interest rate has the highest interest rates, highest bank charges, uh, very high collateral requirements, very stringent uh, DP norms, uh, very strict on uh, packing credit. Uh, you know, I guess it, it goes on. But having said that, when the crisis was there, he was actually our uh, friend in need. And uh, believe it or not, uh, you know, finance has been an integral part of our industry. And we have uh, close to, you know, and since uh, again Dubai and uh, BIPC and the entire team over here is very involved in all our, uh, I would say, banking challenges, issues, whatever you want to name it over the years. Uh, one grouse which, you know, we've always had is that while the public sector has been extremely Friendly and maybe uh, you know, it's because it's a government focus uh, export of perish, you know, from Nehru days to even uh, Modi today, where he's saying we need to do 400 billion dollars. So the public sector banks have been supportive to our industry, but for some reason the private sector has always shy away. And having said that, uh, I guess Indus Ind is maybe one of the few or the premier one, I would say, which is actually funding our industry. And I would say that, uh, you know, and on behalf of all my fellow uh, industry colleagues over here, that one of the key reasons is B2 Bike's contribution to this sector because he understands the sector extremely well. Uh, and I would say only for that, for the support that he's given to our industry, I get a round of applause to you. So, one, one uh, over here is, uh, and one reason could be, again, on a lighter note, is maybe because you also love diamonds as much as uh, we do. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of diamonds on Madam, so that's good. You know, keep the keep the dream going. But having said that, uh, he's humble, he's uh, made sure, he's got global contacts, and, you know, everyone in the industry, and I'm sure, again, you'll hear a lot of this today. But uh, one thing which everyone can bank on, sir, 
is that when they come to you, you are able to solve the problem. You know, in a very in an instant way. If you can do it, you do it. If you can't, you are very candid. But you are always a voice or a shoulder to cry on for, I guess, all the promoter owners that you see over here. And for that, everyone really thanks you. One other thing which uh, I must share with you know your uh, banking team you know over here is, and maybe for the bankers and for the industry, that uh, see we all go through uh, and we all work with several bankers, and that's another thing which was uh, shared with me. And generally in uh, banks, you know there's a task for every three years, or people change, senior level changes, DMDs. You know I mean there there are a lot of changes, but uh, one of the reasons where we've seen tremendous support from Indra Singh and Biju Bhai in particular is because he has created this expertise over a period of time and that's really helped and credit to him also that he has taken the time, money, effort to invest in these relationships. So over the years, you know, and I guess uh, today's uh, attendance if you see, you know, every chair is full, everybody has uh, possibly come here and I must say we do a lot of industry events and in my career, in the last one and a half years, it's probably the first time that we're seeing every uh, you know main partner owner in this room. So that's a testament to what you mean to all of them. It's because of the time that you invested in all these relationships. And again, you know, it's your personal touch where you've been so personally involved with, you know, you know everyone's the partners well, you know their the children well, you know. It's like besides uh, just the balance sheet, your one banker who's gone beyond the balance sheet to get to know everyone's family so well. And I guess uh, considering our industry is an industry which is based on trust, like contrary to the bankers, the entire industry transacts within themselves million of dollars of invoices only on trust, right? There's no collateral, there's nothing. So you need a banker who's actually taken the effort into building relationships, Getting to know, I said, you know, you, you've taken maybe the KYC meaning a little uh, deeper. And considering that, again, on behalf of the entire industry, would appreciate all the years of help, all the crises you've seen us through. And, uh, you know, somebody was again asking me that, uh, why are we doing this event? Is he retiring? What will happen to us? I said, no, no, he's not retiring. We are actually felicitating him why he's very much there, he's very much active, and he's going to take of us for years to come. So thank you, Vijay, and then on behalf of everyone. Thanks, Mr. Colin, for your kind words, and thank you so much, producer, for your constant support. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now I request our vice chairman, GJEPC, uh, Mr. Vipul Shah, to please join us on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Mr. Vipul Shah. Good evening, friends. Diamonds are high value products and we depend on external financing to a great extent, especially the midstream segment of the sector. Indian banks have played a significant role in supporting the diamond industry from its infancy all through its journey to become number one in the midstream segment. Their trust and support was especially following the 2008 crisis that enabled India to emerge stronger. As a banker, the support that Biju Bhai has offered to the diamond industry has been commendable. If you ask any trade member here, who would be the one person standing with the industry at any crisis, I am sure they will have only one name, and that is Mr. Biju Bhai. Biju Bhai, your contribution to the growth of this industry has been immense. This can be judged from the enormous respect and admiration the industry dealers have for you. I am sure most of the diamond dealers in this room today will have inspiring stories to tell about their experience with you. It shows how much we collectively owe you for the success of this industry. We got to learn many things from you, Dubai, and hopefully this will help us in further building relationships and working together for the benefit of both bankers and traders. Thank you once again, Vijumai, for all the support you have given to the industry, and we look forward to your continued guidance to take this industry to the greater heights. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vipul. Uh, now I request our convener and panel, uh, Mr. Russell Mehta, to please join us on stage and say a few words. Please give a big round of applause for Mr. Russell Mehta. 
Thank you. Bijuwai and friends and fans of Bijuwai. I first met Bijuwai sometime around 2000. While Rosie Blue banked with ABN Amro worldwide, we never banked with ABN in India. The relationship in India was quite cold to such an extent that when a meeting was requested by ABN Amro, Worldwide's diamond head Peter Ross, my father wasn't even keen to spend his time in meeting them. I think Piju who had just joined Indian Amro, took it upon himself to break that ice and become the relationship manager between Indian Amro and Rosie. Through his consistent perseverance, I confess that it was love at first sight between Piju and me which has blossomed into a wonderful friendship and a relationship of mutual trust and respect over the years. So many of us are born into diamond families. Bijubai was not. However, such was his contribution to our industry that we can't imagine it without him. I can confidently say, looking at his passion, that diamonds run in his blood. You will all agree that he is a true diamond tech, as he knows the value of relationships, Colin and Vipul Bhai both spoke about, and family ties in our business. Ask that to anyone else, and they may stumble, but not Ijuvai. He has complete clarity about the relationship network and all the interconnections better than even we do. He knows the promoters, their children, and their grandchildren, their names, how they think, how they behave, and their capabilities. This gives him fabulous insights which are not available in balance sheets and profit and loss account of our companies. It is not for nothing that he has a stellar track record of making tons of money for his banks without any difficult debts or any NPAs. While a number of other banks long complain on the difficulties they have faced. His sanctions of limits for your business is the ultimate stamp of approval one can get. The other time of business culture he has in mind is his availability, easy access to him, and the zeal for business and entrepreneurship. He is available, he is available 24 by 7, 365 days, and takes risk in clients he believes in. He will always find ways to do business with his customers. I truly admire this as I have seldom found such an ownership culture in professionals. A few years ago, in a conversation with him, I found out that he did not choose to move to join Indusin with Mr. Sopi initially. In spite of all the financial benefits and stock options promised and the commitment he shared with him, he made the choice to stay at his existing employer just to look after all the diamond customers and the portfolio that was going through some serious stress due to economic crisis of 2008. <coughs> he didn't want to leave the portfolio in such troubled times, not knowing how his successors might navigate this turbulence. My admiration and respect went up even further for him due to his personal sacrifice to support our industry. Our industry and I personally are further grateful for his initiative of operationalizing Diamond Dollar Account. But for BGY, the Diamond Dollar Account scheme would have been just on paper. Only through his imagination and support, we could start using Diamond Accounts. Sorry, Dollar Accounts. We now can't even think of our business without them. I can go on and go on, counting his many interventions and support 
for the betterment of our industry, without which India couldn't have been a superpower in diamond industry. On a more personal note, I respect him for all the advice he has given me personally and professionally for Rosy Group. When all companies were operate opening current accounts outside of their consortium to trade in currencies and make quick gains, it was Bijubai who advised me that for Rosy Group it will not be right and prudent to indulge into it. Although the law may, the, although the law may allow it, such is his care and well-being at his heart for his clients. He is my go-to person and sounding board on ideas I need to think through. <laughs> Finally, and more importantly, in such a challenging industry, Bijubai has always remained true to his morals and ethics. I have never heard of a single instance of him granting an out-of-turn favor or doing even the slightest of things that might cast aspersions on his work or the industry. His governance has always been fair and without bias. Successful without being greedy and always aligned to his moral compass, Bijubai has been an example to us in being a great professional certainly, but also in being an individual work of respect and admiration. Thank you, is not enough, Bijubai, for all what you have done for this industry. You have left an indelible mark on our thoughts, our business, and our industry. It has been my proud privilege to have known you, Bijubai, with lots of gratitude and admiration. All the very best. Thank you so much, Mr. Russell, for uh, letting us know more about Bijubai. Thank you. Now, to say a uh, few more words, now I request uh, our convener of BITC, uh, Mr. Ajesh Mehta, to please join us on stage. Let's have a huge round of applause for Mr. Ajesh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A warm welcome to all of you. For the diamond industry, the name Bijubai holds a lot of meaning. He's a symbol of credibility and wisdom within the fraternity. One could argue that if you don't know who Bijubai is, are you really in the diamond industry? I'm sure you all agree that a banker has a stereotype of being secretive, but he has taken it to a different height. Despite knowing him for the past 22 years, I learned his full name only just a week ago. <laughs> I'm sure not many must have heard of his full name. No? Bijubai is more than a family friend than a banker. Whether it is your birthday, anniversary or any special occasion, he always remembers to call and send his trademark or bouquets and uh, flowers. I must not say once I was reminded by anniversary by his flowers. <laughs> uh, he is a very social person with not only the older generation but also with the new generation coming into the business. He makes an effort to understand what they are thinking and gives them genuine and valuable advice. He has always been a practical banker who empathizes with the trade and is keen to understand his customers' technical issues and is always ready with guidance and solutions. As a part of the banking committee, it is always a pleasure to interact and learn with him. At the banking summits, nobody wants to miss his sessions even though we know what is coming next. He lays down the rare reality of the industry with a simple truth. Vijubai has played an influential role in organizing support to the industry over the past three decades. It is a rare honor to have known him this closely and true pleasure to work with him. Vijubai, it doesn't take a room full of top diamantes to tell you that you are a rare gem. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pajesh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now I request uh, Deputy, Man uh, Deputy Managing Director of Innocent Bank, uh, Mr. Arun Khanna, to please join us on stage and say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Mr. Arun Khanna. Please uh, join us on stage.
thank you very much. Uh, first of all, apologies. Uh, our MD CEO, Suman Katwalia, who was supposed to be here, could not make it this evening due to a emergency call that he got, uh, which could not have been avoided, and he headed for that meeting. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I just got to know that I'm going to be speaking out here, so uh, my privilege uh, right to be here. Uh, first of all, thank you to the association, the Gems and Jewelry uh, Promotion Export Council, for inviting us. I think it's a great honor for the bank, and obviously Biju in uh, particular, uh, for the admiration that he holds uh, with this entire top tier diamond group and the top tier diamond tiers of, uh, of not only India, but I would say you are more of a global brand than just Indian brand. Um, I believe that, um, as what uh, I think Rasulji mentioned about uh, the association coming around with the diamond, uh, diamond tiers, was far from uh, just in the Indian Anglo days, and uh, it's developed or into a new scale, which is totally unforgettable. I believe that uh, with Biju's sort of in-depth domain knowledge and domain expertise in this, and obviously the relationship that he carries, it goes from strength to strength uh, going forward. Uh, I also believe that today, Indusind Bank is very proud to support this entire industry, having over a 30% share in financing of the diamond trade. Uh, I think it's really important that we would partner with you going forward as well. I think the last couple of years uh, truly have been uh, painstaking years for all of us uh, due to the pandemic. And obviously we've been through crisis of 2008 and the pandemic was different from those as uh, I think restriction, movement of goods and uh, everything was hampering uh, truly the entire economic uh, scale of how India was progressing uh, pre-pandemic. But having said that, I think uh, what I would like to admire about Biju in particular is his real conscious effort to keep in touch with each one of you and talk to you about your families as well as about your financing and all this stuff. So I, I think truly it's a sign of a character uh, which only a few people have. And despite going through all the issues that all of us did, he kept on at his, uh, at, at his uh, you know, touch points with the industry as well as his personal relationships. Having said that, I just want to uh, also mention that uh, you know when we talk about investment bank, we talk about or people talk about us as a mid-sized mid bank. And uh, what I really believe is that we are not really a mid-sized bank when you compare us with our domains. We have three different domains in which we capture all the market share, or we are number one or number two in market shares. And very proud to say, diamond is one of our three domains. We will continue to keep that going and we will partner in your growth as well. Uh, I think on the other side, I would also like to give a big word of thanks to the entire uh, Ramintiers for their extraordinary uh, initiative that they take besides just trading in diamonds or manufacturing or polishing or exporting diamonds. I think whatever little I know with some uh, relationships that I have carried over the years, I believe the social causes that you all do and help India's not so privileged to group their lifestyles and their and, and their families is truly impeccable. I think you are role models for uh, most of the business houses, and I believe that that is something that you do not really get noticed for in a, in a larger canvas. But I truly believe that it adds a lot of value to the entire structure and the fabric of the Indian society. So many thanks for contributing towards that cause as well. On Biju uh, in particular, I know I've heard over two decades now with you, so <laughs> I think uh, we partnered enough in terms of uh, knowing each other, not really work uh, extremely closely, but yes, closely enough. I used to look after the entire foreign exchange business, and obviously all of you were dealing in that particular uh, uh, state. So Biju used to always uh, come to me, and I really tell you the structuring that he does and what he knows about the industry is fabulous. I mean, there's a lot of learning I've had from him. And I continue to uh, learn from him as well. I think uh, when you talk of diamonds, I believe uh, something called flawless is supposed to be the best one, and that's what I really, truly believe Biju is for the organization. He's absolutely flawless. I think he's a remarkable uh, personality where the organization really looks forward to him, and as well as uh, so does the industry and through other banks actually. And, and he represents the body or innocent bank in all these bodies, whether it's the risk management framework. Uh, by the RBI or all such uh, uh, you know banking uh, bodies that they rely on. Them. So I truly believe that uh, we do. Uh, it's been an honor for 
me personally also uh, to know you and, and Mila as well. I think it's a lovely family that we know. And uh, really look forward for your country, uh, continued contribution, both to the bank as well as to the industry at large. Uh, once again, thank you to the council for recognizing your efforts of Biju. And uh, we are very proud at Industry Bank to have this felicitation from you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Purana. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you that we've got a very special segment right now. Boss are going to be doing a professional career series of boss. But we are going to tell you more about his personal life too. We are going to have a special segment which is coming very soon. But right now, we've got a very special message from uh, our next chairman, GJEPC. I request Mr. Praveen Shankar Pandya to please join us on stage. Give it up for uh, Mr. Praveen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you want to say a uh, uh, few words for Bijo Bhai, so I request that you please stay for this. A big round of applause for uh, Mr. Praveen. Honorable Kurana Ji, not only mine, but the entire industry is most beloved Bijo Bhai, ma'am, and the entire team of uh, Anderson Bank, who is here today, and my friends from my industry. Yadi Pali Shurwat Kare to Biju Bhai, a hardcore banker. He's a hardcore banker. Banker, they can push log product a banking company. कुछ लोग जो हैं विदेश जाके फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस में बैंकिंग सीखते हैं और कुछ लोग के खून में बैंकिंग होती है ये विजु भाई जो हैं वो तीसरे तरह के हैं यू नो बैंकिंग रन्स इनटू हिज ब्लड एंड दैट इज़ द रीज़न दैट टुडे द इंडस्ट्री लव्स हिम सो मच Biju Bhai's stunt in uh, Avian Ambro. You know, he went so much deep into this damn business. He went and inquired about each businesses, but he did not stop there. You know, he went to the clients of those companies. He met them. He saw them how they do business. No, he would make it a point to travel to Hong Kong, to travel to Antwerp, to travel to various parts of the world. And he would say, Rasad Bhai hai aapka bhaiya, unke clients kaise hai, kaun hai? So it was kind of very uh, in-depth study that he did on diamond business. And he would probably know much before than probably we do, ke ab ye diamond mein kab uh, depression aane wala hai, kab business uh, is slow hone wala hai. So this was his, his style of going about businesses. And apart from that, he had some kind of commitment which I have rarely seen. I mean, the way he handled the whole business, you know, the way he chose his client portfolio. Aap dekhenge, I was shocked, I, I was chairman three times of this council and I saw that how he, every time, you know, there was some difficulty in the market and there were few bankruptcies. The name of uh, APN or at that point even other banks was, you know, his uh, banker's name was the last, you know, the least amount of uh, NPA that you would encounter. In his this thing, वो वो तो मुझे आज तक विश्वास नहीं होता कि बीजू भाई इसको कैसे कर जाते हैं। You know sometimes even we did not believe कि ये पार्टी एक दो साल में कुछ डिफिकल्टी में आ सकती है। लेकिन जब एबीएन का देखते थे तो उसमें सबसे कम एक्सपोज़र रहता। So maybe he had some hidden uh, this thing which he would apply to those uh, things. So, yes, and apart from that, the commitment. 
You see, when the RPS took over uh, EBN, he stayed with the RPS uh, for a long time. And at that time, foreign ke kuch banks came here, they were closed. There were some private banks who were withdrawing from the diamond industry, not sure how this industry operates. That was the time when Bijubai stood by the industry. And I think one of the main reasons that we would be honoring a banker today. We have never honored a banker today. In fact, you know, this is kind of late that we are honoring him. But you know, he stood by the bank and by the industry. If he had walked out at that point of time from RBS, probably RBS would have wound up much earlier from India and gone back. So it is only because, and then he put up uh, a team of few persons which supported him and then and the kind of portfolio that was a portfolio of a, close to a billion dollars and then he stood and he did that thing so nicely that I, I don't have words that how he helped that industry because at that point of time the banks in Nantua were withdrawing they were closing down and there was a need of money in this industry I mean, suddenly some banker in Antwerp, which is financing to the Indian industry to the tune of a billion dollar walks out. That is not the time when you want some another Indian banker to walk out. So that is what he did, you know. I mean, he took it upon himself to complete that task. And then at that point of time, I remember probably, uh, Russell would also remember, I went three times. I mean, he was making sure that the license of RDS continues. And he approached council, he approached ministries. I went to banking secretary three times. He was a rather difficult person. Normally, I get through with these bureaucrats very quickly. But, you know, finally we got through that. But then there is another story which, uh, you know, we don't want to this thing that, you know, even Bijubai did not know that RBS was being negotiated with Nissan uh, Bank. And then he came to Nissan Bank. And ever since then, I, I see that all the diamond chairs have been extremely happy with this union. And I'm, I'm also at this point of time must uh, congratulate Nissan Bank to have taken that bold decision of entering into diamond business when the situation was not very right. I mean, it was probably a visionary who could take that decision. I mean, today looking back, you might think that that was a very good decision, but taking that decision at that point of time must have been very difficult. And we as a diamond industry must uh, be thankful to investment bank to have taken that decision. Because in you, we have a solid banker here and in India today we are the world leaders. We intend to remain that way, in fact increase our business shares. Our, our young boys from our industry are doing extremely well in diamonds but in jewelry and all other spheres and for this they would definitely be needing the support of uh, this bank and with the at the help Viju Bhai we are extremely confident and thankful for this. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you so much Mr. Praveen. So Viju Bhai, Bahad Sai and Amare Jukhebi leaders they, they just came here to congratulate you. They told us a lot of you but we want a couple of more messages for you. People across the globe loves you, so we have a very special Amy, and uh, that got a lot of messages for you. So I request all of you to just quickly check this out. Can we have the Amy, please? तो है 
लेकिन उससे ऊपर बोल सकता हूँ कि 25 साल से ज्यादा समय में जो बिजू भाई ने डिसीजन लिए है उसका सम्मान है क्यों सही और गलत में जो आप डिफरेंस समझ सकते हैं बिजू भाई वो मैं नहीं मानता हूँ कि और कोई ऐसा व्यक्ति मैंने फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूट में लिखा हुआ तो यहां में फाइनेंस का डायमंड दुनिया के लिए चाणक्य बोल सकता हूं ये काम इन कंपोज पर्सनालिटी हैविंग सॉल्यूशन टू एनी प्रॉब्लम दैट इज प्लेस बिफोर हिम ही ऑलवेज मेंटेन एक्सेलेंट कस्टमर रिलेशनशिप Why he supported the industry, he always took care of bank's interests through careful selection of customers. Bank and VGG always complemented and supplemented each other. The very factor for success of diamond division of the bank. Soft spoken, humble, sweet talker, but go getter as far as his nature is concerned. He has helped the industry to grow to a great level by not only interacting with the exporters but with the RBI and the Bankers Association on our behalf. In many of the crises, I have seen him, right from the days of ABN till now in Industrial Bank, supporting the cause of the exporters and have framed the policies which are beneficial to the industry at large. It's a particular pleasure for me because I have never known a banker that has a more profound understanding of the Indian gem and jewelry business than your good self. And I've been reflecting on where that success might come from. And I can't claim to understand your secret recipe, but I can just mention a few things I've noticed over my years of interacting with you. And the first of those is that you invest in your customers, and I don't mean dollars. I mean your time and your effort is invested in getting to know, at a deep level, the people and the businesses that make up this industry. And then on that investment, you really do build relationships, and because of your long tenure in this industry, those relationships are relationships that have lasted decades rather than years. And with those relationships in mind, you're able to think commercially and strategically, and you can see beyond today's market to see the business of tomorrow. You see its threats, and you also see its opportunities. And with that in mind, you're able to back winning businesses and really back them as well, not just through the good times, but through the bad times as well. And I think the final part of the recipe is that you love to see your clients succeed. And Biju, I've never seen you happier than when in 2015, De Beers awarded a new site to a business that you had been backing for at least 10 years and had grown from a tiny turnover to a great success. And I think you, you, you were like a, a new grandfather with a new baby to see that customer succeed. Dear Biju, congratulations on this special evening that the JGBC organized for you to honor you for the great services you have done towards the Indian diamond and jewel industry. And it's for the right reason that I put you in the spotlight. You have not only been a banker, but you have also been a mentor towards the industry, towards companies, towards stakeholders, towards families, and other colleagues within the financial industry. I'm also very glad that I got a chance to work for a number of years together with you under the Egan Emerald umbrella. Uh, and that, that great bonding that took place since that time has continued. You're to me not only a very dear colleague, but also a very dear friend. And I certainly hope that for the years to come, you will remain active within the industry. Obviously, hopefully also supported by them. We do my mic, but we do I that you all know him. I would say that uh, if there's anybody in the banking industry who deserves this particular honor, it would be uh, Biju, uh, because of his deep insights and understandings of the diamond industry. And in that sense, you know, in addition to being a lender, he's been a true friend, philosopher, and guide uh, to the industry. 
I would say that in my 46 years of banking, if there was any guru that I recognized, it was Biju Bai for his knowledge of the diamond industry. Okay. 
Otherwise, I wear blue tires. Okay. Okay, so blue is your favorite color. Um, is this correct? Absolutely correct. Okay, here we go. So the next question is uh, credit or cash? Credit. Okay, credit. Thank you. Okay, next one. Uh, sir, if you uh, get any of the superpower, uh, would you choose invisibility or mind reading? If you get a chance to get any of the superpowers, you've got two options. One is invisibility or the mind reading. Which one would you choose? Mind reading. Mind reading. Okay, so if you get a chance to read any of your uh, colleague or friend mind here, whom will you choose? All of them. <laughs> That's quite interesting. But if you have to choose any one, then who? Except me. Otherwise, I am the safest one. You can just say, okay, I'll read your mind. But I'm not allowed. One is very difficult to choose. I should say my wife. Oh, I was expecting this. Okay. Thank you so much. So ma'am, just be careful. He might get a superpower. Okay, here you go. Sir, the, man, the movie character you wish you were. Any, any, any of your favorite movie uh, which you have recently watched or you have watched before it? But okay, I, I, I would have played this movie. No, I, I don't think so. Okay, I don't think so. That's totally fine. No worries. Okay, next one is uh, what is your all-time uh, go-to favorite song? Song? That's my wife's department. <laughs> okay, that's the wife's department. Okay, but any of your uh, favorite song which you love to sing or whenever you go out, you just sing, uh, you just listen to it and enjoy. Diamonds are forever. Oh, the diamonds are forever. Wow, oh, fabulous. Here comes the next one. What is your favorite holiday destination? Puri in Odisha. Puri in Odisha. Fabulous. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, if you could get a uh, chance to travel back in time, what period of your career would you like to go? I enjoyed every period of my career, so everything is fine. Everything is fine. You don't want to go back and uh, correct anything. You are just okay with whatever is going on, right? Yeah. Fabulous. A big round of applause. Thank you so much for your answer. Now I got last two questions. Uh, the second last is uh, there's a recent uh, movie dialogue that risk hai to ishq hai. So do you believe in this? Yeah, true. Okay, yeah, true. Absolutely, risk hai to ishq hai. And if not a not a, a diamond banker, uh, what would you have chosen as your alternate career? Any other industry banker. Okay, not a banker. Then, if you're not a banker, then uh, what are you doing? Teacher. Teacher. Fabulous, thank you, Jaren. Thank you so much sir, for all your answers. And a big round of applause for Vijay. Thank you so much sir, for taking your time out and joining me on stage. Now, we are going to do a very special segment. I request you to stay back on stage for a minute. Okay, so now uh, to felicitate Vijay, I would like to uh, invite our leaders on stage. I request Mr. Colin Shah. Mr. Vipul Shah, Mr. Rasul Mehta, Mr. Ajesh Mehta. I request uh, all our uh, leaders to please quickly join us on stage and felicitate uh, Biju uh, Bhai. A huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for Biju Bhai. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very special moment. We request you all. Can we have a huge round of applause for you? I request Nam also if you can just quickly join from stage for a minute.
Okay, uh, now I uh, request for, we are going to take a quick photograph, so I request uh, our uh, GJE PC uh, COA members to join us on stage for a quick uh, photograph. A uh, quick round of applause. Uh, photos, you can see the photos, you can see the photos, you can see the photos, so we request you please join us on stage. It had a lot of manufacturing, 
but it had some very big people and others were uh, probably just manufacturing and bringing the diamonds and giving it to the uh, uh, traders in Bombay, uh, either traders or wholesalers. And they in turn were giving to wholesalers in the US and in Hong Kong. So those companies, we have seen the goods going to Trafican, Star, LID, or in Israel to Sector uh, Namdar and others, but not even directly. It was through some offices in Bombay. And in Hong Kong, it was say Fu Hang, Li Hang, and all those people who were buying a wholesale from India. And Indians were supplying to that. It was very difficult as a banker to understand the business that well. Uh, it was very difficult because we don't know where your cash coming from. You were selling to one office in Bombay, and that office is selling again to another wholesaler in the uh, US or in. Hong Kong or in Israel. Uh, so it was very uh, difficult for a banker, and that's why the banking was not much here. Hardly there is any banking. Our industry really received a lot of support from rough traders uh, from Antwerp and Israel, who gave a lot of credit to Indian manufacturers, and who really grew with the support from them, with a little bit of support from Indian banks. And as and when things opened up in the market and things became transparent, Indian bankers started lending more and more. Uh, in that time, it was more trade credits. So there were uh, big industrial leaders uh, in India, um, many of them, and there were a lot of uh, artists and the creditors uh, in Andhra. Uh, so they were supporting this. Slowly the business opened up. We found that the US traders came to India to buy, and there were many companies who were selling directly to those traders. So that time, like uh, uh, you all said, that we went to different markets to understand who are your buyers, buyers, to know where the goods ultimately are going. Gem and Jewelry Export Promotion Council has really played a very major role in this industry. We have seen those days even for d of certain submittance to a Huawei interest license. Slowly the license went and then they allowed certain submittance to d -Bears. And in the mining side, was, it was also a monopoly. d was initially selling everything. It had the goods of their companies, they were looting towards selling to them, even Russian goods were sold to them. And the viewers had their people who were picking up all the diamonds in Africa. So it was a monopoly and anyone who was knowing the Antwerp site holders or the site, they had all the budgets. Today, some of our top industrialists in this country were not into that advantage that time because they were buying through the market and they had no access to the supplies. So uh, I think you into separated, although the uh, Russia started selling uh, separately and then and the uh, rough diamonds came also from other centers. That little bit opened up and created opportunity for almost everybody, though they continued to be supported more by the banks and also by the network traders. Uh, that time also slowly India was uh, improving the technological age in doing the manufacturing. That time Russell Hari talked about that GJPC did a wonderful thing. Uh, that is by getting a diamond dollar account. Before diamond dollar account, uh, you will see, uh, I remember we had clients who uh, manufactured only markets and they manufactured their goods, they gave a, gave their diamonds to say Rujibu office and after some time, uh, so they were getting a bigger per and export of some round diamonds. So you were getting very surprised, uh, you manufacture markets and why is it your invoice is of a round diamond? He says the issue is about only $250,000 which I have sold, so the debt comes. 
and I think one person who was uh, in the industry and uh, Karasi Rai probably since I was talking to him quite a lot, he was also wanting that there should be a little more transparency than this uh, bigger coming from something, than the sales for something, etc. And it was also helping the banking system. So we thought we should give all our energy and might to this and to expand this business. So that at least they, <coughs> they sell to somebody and they get the, and get the export orders of what they are selling. And that brought in a maximum uh, transparency to our business. And that is the time uh, when, uh, you know, India was slowly moving from rough, small uh, uh, manufacturing to big diamond. And we must thank 70 way even who also played a role. Today, all of uh, the front range we are seeing, Gansham Bhai, Mauji Bhai, Lalji Bhai, all of you, uh, and Prakash Bhai Bhuti, who are manufacturing large diamonds. At one point, India hardly had any uh, characters, uh, diamonds or big diamonds in manufacturing here. All of you, the industrialists now, you see that. That was happening, technology was happening, and Indian banks were getting more and more con comfortable and confident to finance. And distribution also, that time was changing. We found that the US trader, they could not probably manage the transition, and all of them went bankrupt. We fabricant, the Lady, Star, all of them. Huan, Yang, and all others in Hong Kong, they did not because they had properties. Uh, which the price went up, uh, and that time Indians went there to open their offices in New York and in Hong Kong. There were a lot of offices came and they became really big and replaced them. So we have been constantly replacing the uh, the middlemen in all corners, and then the business is getting more and more transparent, and bank probably from some hundred million or few hundred millions in uh, in our limits to today we are at two billion dollars or we are like our BMD said at uh, 30 percent of world world's largest financer and the world's largest financer is located in Bombay not in Antwerp or in Israel. That time we came uh, to a new uh, setup started in stage three that is uh, GGPC again got a lot more that is you can do uh, advanced remittances to private resources and uh, not only details, uh, quite a lot of resources could be we could do and the bank finance increased. Uh, uh, the angle of supply uh, was also supporting as a supplementary, not as uh, probably the prime thing. Still, we depend a lot on the secondary sources. Secondary sources has created probably our industry in a big way because if it was only site holders, we would not have grown that much. The secondary sources um, made our industry grow. New diamond manufacturers came, and we as a bank always also had some sort of a venture capital. Like we uh, wanted to uh, also see that small customers grow big so that we get new customers than only having uh, to deal with only our big customers. We always uh, sought them, but we wanted new and new customers to come up. So that way, India was uh, getting uh, uh, coming to a next stage where the supply side got organized. Manufacturing, probably we have the best factories in the world. And uh, many years ago, we had very less factories, and uh, very few uh, people who were in Surat were talked about. When Gary Penny was there, he once went to Surat and he said, uh, I liked a few companies. Uh, I, I think Parag Bhai is here. He told me he has probably one of the best factories. And, uh, but then now you see, number of factories which are world class uh, in Surat and I don't think there is any other factory anywhere else in the world these are viewed as our top customers today, top, top exporters. Uh, so the industry went on uh, growing 
and with this growth, the banking uh, growth happened. And banks needed to know what is required. We also work as a guide to other banks by knowing what business we do, who are we financing, who are they, and what are they doing, and what is their future. If we don't know what's their future, uh, then we will be uh, always caught um, lacking. I told again and again that we are always in a stage of transition. How somebody is preparing for the future, and that is how he is defined to survive or to bear. We have seen people who went past, uh, they did not, it, it, it was not very sustainable. We have seen the names, we were there in 97, they were not there after some time. The top, top four names always changed in our industry. Uh, and why they changed? Because probably they did not plan or ahead for the changing times. If we don't uh, plan for the changing times, then we will probably get into some difficulties. And as a bank, and uh, as you say, as the leader of the banking industry for this business, we always make sure that who is going to manage this change? And what is his personal integrity and character and success and planning? If the, uh, if the character was not there, if the success and planning was not there, for, uh, for most successful and best performing business, we exited. We said it's not sustainable. Probably uh, that is where we survived and we continue to uh, serve and we continue to uh, uh, do business. Then, uh, then with all these things, uh, uh, urban remittance and with all these things we came to the next stage. The, uh, the foreign banks, they exited. Many of the Indian banks, they were playing off and on. We have seen 2009 when banks uh, uh, became extremely uh, probably negative towards this business because there were very large entities to dominate man. They uh, mostly depended on ECGC for continuing or other or expanding or other with the business. For a bank like ours in Indian number or in industry without the ECGC guarantee, uh, we never look for ECGC because uh, with many of you I have told many times if I must write the risk, I understand. I don't know anybody else to guarantee me the risk in my business. Uh, it sounds too muscular, but uh, it was a reality. We did not, we said we will not go for that. We will not look for somebody else guaranteeing my loans. I guarantee my loan, or I write the loans, I understand. So that helped us because we understood your business. We understood you. We understood your next generation. We understood their character, their integrity, and uh, uh, they as persons, and whether they have the right attitude to change. With all these things, we have all survived. We have all done well. We have reached a stage. Uh, Surat is now probably world's major technology center. Surat is the not center of our business. We have all seen how it has from a sweat of uh, before 97, there was play, uh, and I was told in Indian number, they were giving, getting a discomfort allowance to be in India because Surat is close by, and people thought that could be a pandemic any time. So from there to now, an outstanding city which is growing every day and uh, controlling the business worldwide has been. Uh, China. Uh, Praveen Rai told about 2015 as a time for uh, Indian number to buy this business. Yes. All of you are here. Uh, Praveen Rai, Russell Bhai, Raja Bhai, Milan Bhai. All of us, all of you helped us in getting the license. Every number was keen on getting the license to continue the business. Yes, I, I do call up your help. Thankful for that. We were running a project called Arya, Avian Number Returns to India again after this sir. Uh, Avian Number really sold 37 million euro to set up a bank for another 100 years. I was the chairperson of the Arya project. But uh, 
thought you would help me got a license, but that license was to open a bully one subsidiary. And with one branch and with one uh, monoline business of diamond, we could not have run a bully one subsidiary where it requires uh, to do uh, the, um, the uh, uh, private sector lending, agriculture lending, etc. The option was we cannot accept uh, a only one subsidiary. So we had to surrender that license. And the option before me was uh, to close the business, to sell the business, or to open a branch. Since branch did not happen, the government of India did not leave because Netherlands did not give a branch license to SBI and international bank licenses are linked to reciprocity. So they said, since you did not give a branch license to an Indian bank, we will also give you a open one subsidiary because you gave us a open one subsidiary. So that was the situation in which this business was off for either sell or close down. And Pravin Bhai, uh, uh, you all said, uh, in bank, probably had the courage of conviction. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Steer is here, Mr. Ramaswamy Mayapan is here, Ramesh Ganeshan, the project manager from Indian Ambro side is here, and our team Mr. Purana is here. They knew this business. This risk model was really created by uh, Mr. Sokhi and Steer. I was only implemented uh, in Indian Ambro before the lab. So, uh, uh, so they knew this business, they knew the underlying strength of this business and like you all said, 2015 is not a time to buy a time of business, 2014-15. But they had the courage and I must tell you that after we came here, we don't have a loss in this business. So in the same bank has, is not worse off, they have been better off because this business uh, continues, you all helped us grow this business. Then we always have a problem. We have seen 2009. Um, we have seen, then we had the pandemic. Pandemic, uh, we were always doing in 2020 April um, that uh, what would be the loss in our business. Our investors were asking to do a stress test of the business, to do a sensitivity analysis, to see what happens if the Business doesn't start for six months, one year, one and a half year, etc. Uh, we estimated losses and we thought this much losses we can have if the business doesn't uh, come into operation uh, by July, by September, by December 2020. Uh, but nothing of that sort happened. Uh, we always know from 2009 when the people go down the uh, difficult uh, lane, they come back, they divide with their engines. And we saw that uh, by September, uh, immediately in the international market, the online itself started. By uh, July, August, our enterprise of Indian industry uh, opened up the market. By September, we were in a better position. By 31st March 2021, probably our industry made the highest profit ever in spite of close down. So pandemic was also a stress test for us, for you, for all of us. And we survived. And uh, I think uh, this business is forever. Uh, only the players change. And the, there are many players who are continuing for multiple generations. Uh, uh, you are all sitting here for multiple generations already. Those who are here for multiple generations, already three generations, four generations, when I talk to uh, people with, uh, um, with like Viraj in Rojibu or uh, Alaf in Mahindra Brothers, I was knowing his father, I was knowing uh, his uh, grandfather. So in my time, I'm already uh, dealing with uh, three generations. I have dealt with Arun by Russell by and Viraj. So like this, many of you are here where we have been dealing with three generations. We know those companies, those businesses who can plan and who can see how they can 
uh, challenge there, how they can navigate in changing times and can see the future and really plan and work to meet these challenges, they will survive, continue and grow. So we have Navratan Bhai, a great grandfather, and recently we received uh, an achievement awards in Dubai. Uh, also, he is probably uh, 1905, and now it is 2021. So it's already 116 years uh, in this business. Uh, so the businesses can continue for hundreds of years, if probably it is run well. So that has been my journey. In this journey, I have to thank many people, <laughs> probably to, to fast um, to start with uh, my bank. Both in the Zavian Amro or State Bank or in the same bank now, and the managing directors and uh, the uh, the colleagues there who really help you. Ramesh Ganesh, who is here also from my colleague from two banks now, and also instrumental in many of my changes, including joining Zavian and joining the same. Mr. Sridhar, who has uh, guided me in uh, giving this risk management skills. And ably and uh, doubly supported by Ramshwari Mayapan, who is our uh, risk head CRO now. Arun, who has been uh, with, uh, always a friend and a guide in his current experience, risk management, and also bank management, currently auditing. My team, uh, some of them are continuing. Uh, I was, uh, teams have been uh, wide and large, including gear transition. Who was there? I was regional manager in Asia. There also I had team in Hong Kong, in Shanghai, in Tokyo, in Thailand, in Dubai, and in Singapore. Uh, in uh, uh, I managed. I learned from them about multicultural management. I, as a global management team member and a member of the capital allocation committee, we also went through credits all over the world, down from India, Asia. Uh, Africa, Europe, and Americas. Uh, so they, this gave a lot of knowledge, and all of them I learned a lot. And my continuing team uh, and people who are continuing for a long time with me, and all of them are here, very grateful and thankful to them. And the Indian diamond and jewelry industry, that is uh, our everything, because we only know now this business, everything else we have forgotten. So in your success is our livelihood. I tell that to everybody every day. He, we have a job, we have a livelihood because this business is there. If they refuse to run their business, we will make them run their business. <laughs> <laughs> that is our uh, aim because uh, our livelihood depends on them. Our growth depends on them. And they have to succeed. They, they will always succeed. Uh, we have many teachers, I have many teachers. Almost everybody has taught me many things. Uh, uh, I cannot take specific names because I do not see anyone whom I can say he, not him, but him. All of you have taught me. I have learned every day from you, from your working style, from your family management, from the decisions you take. And the decisions you take, we learn how decisions are taken and uh, how a success happens. Yes, some people may have been unhappy because we exited their business. Because, uh, but they have, uh, we have been friends with them. Uh, uh, after uh, the leave, when they start another business, we have been, if they have not been uh, very bad to the banks, they have not cheated the banks, we have supported them. If they have cheated the banks, yes, we have, then there is a character issue. And our client selection, in the core of our client selection is character. If uh, the person uh, has character, then we do not mind losing money. We are always, we are always ready in multiple times that people have lost money. I know people who came and told me multiple times that they have lost all their capital. If they do a mark-to-market of their uh, uh, inventory, then probably at one particular point of time, their business has no capital. 
We have also told them why you are thinking of marketing to market. We know this is the situation, but this will revive. And you continue to do business and go on digging in additional gas acquiring business. And let's see. And I have seen them coming back with a lot of uh, a lot of uh, energy and have reached the top in their own businesses. We have seen there are some people who are always changing uh, and who have managed changes uh, very well. I have seen in this business the people who have managed changes best. They have survived best. They have grown best. Uh, uh, that is the most important is to manage change. Because whatever advantage today we have in the last one year, we are probably running a dream down. We have seen also Arnold that we can be the richest person in the world. Um, because the luxury industry is doing exceedingly well, that price prices went up. But we have seen these advantages in the past. And nothing is forever. We have seen the uh, and of uh, traders when I went in 2097, say 2000, 2001, and for traders came, BTC goods came, they supplied, Alroja came, supplied, Rio Tinto came, supplied, after that they always were planning holidays. If you go to and in between time, you see they are always talking about holiday plans, what is the next holiday plan. But today you found that uh, the, that advantage did not stay, that went away. The business moved to us. Today, uh, in the pandemic, because nobody could come here, uh, we were, uh, it was contactless sell. So, COD sales, online sales, internet sales, that was the, the mode of selling. Uh, but can we say that forever we will do away with our marketing services? May not be. Because the thing is always in evolution. We will not know what will be the next stage and how things will be in the next stage. So always to look at the future, we call it in the risk management as reading teams. Uh, we tell our risk, manager, uh, risk management team that uh, we are probably better off, sir, because we are reading teams. What is reading teams? Reading teams is to see what is not feasible now. In the banking, they say early morning signal. Early morning signal is like first stage of cancer. So there, uh, you cannot come out 100% uh, free. We are dealing in public money, so we always say that we don't want to make any loss. So the, uh, we want to read the details that things will fall off. So before that, we should exit. Because with, and if some business is going because of commercial reason, we handhold the customer. But if it is because somebody is uh, taking away money, he has no intention to pay, then it is better to leave. Because if any time you catch somebody in the early stage of cancer, that is likely that it would be high. And if you could have some weaknesses in their remaining surface. I think our business is also similar. All relationships are similar. So it, it is always good to plan in the future what will happen tomorrow. Uh, so many of you I have discussed how things will work. So trading evolution, taking corrective action is better than waiting for some quality uh, uh, That has kept us better. And I think before 2008, we were thinking, uh, my colleague from State Bank of India is here, we were looking at other banks as our competition. 2008-9, the way it happened, uh, even banks like ADB and uh, SBI and many banks in India, big, big banks, are very large in India. And the very large NPA little bit made things very difficult for their management to continue approving enhancements, etc. And that day we learned that is, it is our job to collaborate with our competition uh, and not treat them as competition. From that time onwards, we are collaborating. Uh, we always in a meeting say what's happening in the market, 
and we go on feeding information. Because the Indian banking system doesn't invest much in the risk management. That is one of the reasons why probably things happen the way it happens. And then, uh, so we collaborated and we passed on and that helps us. Otherwise, we found that quite a lot of pressure comes on us to finance. Uh, and it creates artificial shortage of uh, bank lines. Uh, so today, that problem is not there. Today we are all collaborating. I think things are better. Some of the accounts which gave bad name to the industry, I agree with the council and the trade that uh, had banks been a little more careful, this would not have happened. Uh, such large and uh, uh, NPS, uh, maybe uh, we would have also collaborated more with those banks, but it's very difficult. Customers can sue you if you tell them that their business is not good enough and you are prohibited. So whatever possible, uh, maybe industry can also help. So we together can work uh, for, for uh, Prakash Bhai's daughter is here. And she will become uh, like Navratan uh, Probably uh, the business should continue and, uh, and do good. Uh, she is probably the youngest person I see in the, in the audience. So that is how uh, the business should be. And we will work together. I am a little bit overwhelmed again uh, to thank to adequately Indian Jam and Jewelry Industry, GJBC, and uh, Colin Bhai, Russell Bhai, Rajesh Bhai, Nikul Bhai, Dilip Bhai, and also by the, uh, the administrators, the uh, office bearers of GJBC for organizing this. Thank you very much.
Salah in the sky, Bismillah.